Okay, hello, um, my name is Antonio Moro and I'm Associate Professor of Mathematics at Northumbria University. Uh, I'm Michael Shearer, I'm Professor Emeritus from North Carolina State University. Hi, I'm Mark Hofer, I'm a Professor of Applied Math at CU Boulder. Hi, I'm Gennady Yale, I'm Professor of Applied Mathematics at the University of North Northumbria here in the UK. And I'm Barbara Frenari, and I'm a Professor in the Department of Mathematics at the University of Buffalo. So our program is called Dispersive Hydrodynamics, which really encompasses a unified mathematical framework in which to study multi-scale uh, nonlinear dispersive wave phenomena. And we have four themes that are really overlapping. Um, and uh, the first one, modulation theory and dispersive shock waves, is representative of a canonical problem in which um, you have to regularize hydrodynamic singularities, and in, in, our, in our field, uh, the dominant regularization mechanism is dispersion, as opposed to dissipation. Um, following that, we have uh, an emphasis on analysis, so rigorous analysis, using different techniques, PD analysis, as well as integral systems theory, to study these classes of problems. And then uh, the third theme is when you throw in randomness, and uh, have random collections of waves, and how do these evolve in the presence of nonlinearity, dispersion, and especially in uh, integrable systems, uh, where you can see some very interesting uh, phenomena. And then the last theme is physical applications. There's a large number of applications, um, which uh, include geophysical fluid dynamics, water waves, internal waves, atmospheric waves, uh, as well as nonlinear optics and um, uh, ultra-cold uh, quantum fluids. So, those are our themes. Well, I would say there are kind of two sources of excitement here. One of them, there are plenty of new exciting experiments in physics and new experimental results available over the last like 10, 15 years, uh, they became available and they posed new challenges, new questions. And on the other hand, in parallel, there are new mathematical techniques have been developed uh, over this, this period of time. And magically or not, these two things come together and they lead to a very interesting new well, collaborations and new results, uh, both mathem in mathematics and in physics. So, new mathematical results, they they suggest new physical experiments, and this is what actually happening during this program. New collaborations are already being established here, and uh, this is this is one of the main things. So, the collaboration between almost all, all just pure mathematicians and experimental physicists, and of course, in between there is applied mathematics that balances these these two extremes, if you want, and. Uh, Pertinent to this particular program, well, there are kind of very clearly, clearly and cleanly defined challenges that we we understand, and they can be just formulated as bullet points. It's non-integrability, non-convexity, multiple di multiple dimensions, and randomness. So it's just just four pillars, if you want, and they all are pertinent to more classical, uh, more established areas of mathematics, uh, like dynamical systems, fluid mechanics, but now they have completely different flavor because we have different, as Mark already said, different mechanisms of regularization. This is dispersion, and it leads to completely new both patterns, observables, but also to completely new mathematics, which is necessary to, to describe this phenomenon. And this is where all excitement comes from. And I would add to that um, the uh, boundary act problems. Yes, of course. As, as challenges. Yeah. As challenges. Yeah. yeah. And, and multi-component systems uh, coupled with uh, yes. non-trivial boundary conditions that uh, um, both are fairly uh, new. I mean, this type of problems have not been tackled uh, until relatively recently, so there's a lot of excitement about the, the uh, new progress uh, in the field. 
So I, I'm a relative newcomer to the field, and I come from a different community, that of hyperbolic conservation laws, shock waves, uh, but also dynamical systems and bifurcation. So these are new techniques for this, this field, and we're seeing the connections between one theory and the dispersive equations theory. And that, that, I think it's pretty exciting for me, it's exciting. Yeah, so techniques that are used in these other areas that are kind of very familiar to those, those, uh, those folks can yeah. now be applied to these new problems and um, uh, with, with, with a lot of success. Okay. Also, I would say that the development and the, the progress in the theory of uh, uh, dispersive shock waves and uh, the integrability uh, showed that the, the methods and the techniques of the, uh, uh, for integrable systems are very solid and robust and uh, help uh, to uh, understand the features of more general systems, not integrable systems. So, uh, integrable uh, integrable systems te techniques and the properties of integrable systems uh, seem to be uh, applicable and uh, helpful in understanding phenomena in more general settings. But yet, one of the big, the first challenge you named <coughs> yeah. was non-integrability. Non-integrability. Yeah. So, how do you bridge that gap, and how do you bring broader techniques to those classes of problems? Yeah. Another. Another class of problem that, that, that comes naturally here, it also it kind of inspired by classical fluid dynamics, there is a huge problem of turbulence, very well known and, and still not solved, it's a very active area. But you can bring this, this setting, kind of random motion of fluid, into the area of nonlinear waves, uh, integral systems, and you get completely new type of integrability, but new type of turbulence, it's called integral turbulence. Soliton gases, so these are all new exciting developments in this area. With experience, too. With experience. Yeah. In waterways and nonlinear objects, like fiber objects. Um, well, I already mentioned a few when we were talking about the themes. Um, fluid dynamics is kind of the, the inherited one, right? Uh, waterways, a classical problem, and really, um, I would say, got nonlinear wave, the field, nonlinear waves going. Um, and so this is being revisited now in the context of these ideas that we've talked about. And uh, people are doing new experiments in uh, water waves, internal waves, uh, observations, questions about um, understanding them, and bringing these techniques to bear. Um, also, uh, a big area that, that Gennady mentioned was uh, nonlinear optics. And so, um, you know, the ability to send uh, Pulses and wave trains, nonlinear wave trains, over very long distances draws in the multi-scale nature of dispersal hydrodynamics naturally. Um, and so being able to uh, model that and interpret it is, is key. And then finally, uh, superfluids or quantum fluids, uh, Bose-Einstein condensates, uh, and condensed matter um, is, a, is a, rich, uh, a rich playground for a lot of these kinds of problems. Um, and so, you know, you hear about the model equations that describe these systems. And I think that's a key feature is that the mathematical models that we're studying are quite general. Um, we have this notion of universality. And uh, therefore, we probably can't even envision some of the applications that will come about as a result of the mathematics being developed now in this field. So. Uh, yeah, I, I would just add that well, some, it, it is quite exciting and, and even surprising or remarkable that some very refined mathematical results, they, they find their applications and you can actually observe effects, phenomena predicted by this very, very, very refined mathematics that comes from integrable systems in particular. Also, uh, I think we probably can add that the techniques developed in the context of dispersive hydrodynamics uh, are uh, uh, opening, uh, are paving the way to new applications in the context of statistical mechanics and thermodynamics to understand uh, from a different perspective uh, the notion of complexity, understand how complexity emerges in, uh, in uh, uh, real-world systems and uh, and the applications in these uh, directions are uh, to be discovered, I guess, most of them. Um, 
Yes, yeah, so I would say that our program is quite remarkable in that um, it's, uh, it's very broad, quite interdisciplinary in, in nature. Um, the, the topics have, you know, a significant overlap, but also uh, they give the opportunity that, that the program will bring together, as we said uh, multiple times, um, people from different communities that don't normally, uh, you know, uh, have a chance of, of talking uh, and collaborating over a relatively extended period of time. So. Um, we definitely anticipate a lot of, you know, cross pollination uh, in uh, between uh, fields, and uh, I see the interactions between analysts and uh, um, people that do uh, numerics and and you know experimentalists as a as an incredible opportunity. I'd like to add a little bit about that. The the there is there are interactions between up-and-coming stars in the field. So we've got a lot of young uh, researchers in the, involved in the program and, you know, just a really nice bunch of people. And uh, they're talking to each other, they're talking to senior people. So, you know, this is, a, this is a field that in a way is in its infancy, but it, there's a lot of excitement about it. And so, you know, it's great to be able to sort of inspire the, the up-and-coming generation and they, they will take over and uh, carry the subject forward. I agree, and there's a palpable sense of excitement. This is just our second week, and for many of us, including myself, this is our first time being with colleagues after a long lockdown, and um, so we're really grateful to the Isaac Newton Institute for giving us this opportunity to come together in this very pleasant, uh, conducive, relaxed environment to work together and um, talk about all of these exciting problems. It feels really good to be here. Yeah.